Welcome to Tour Truck Tuesday. Chris Trot here. If you like what you are seeing or you've enjoyed some of these videos, be sure to hit the notification button. Be sure to subscribe. In my hand here, a bit of fun this week. I'm holding four areas for clubs that can be tricky. And in an area that's important, we've got a Stealth 4 iron, which is absolute money from the early testing on here. I'm going to show you a Sim UDI, but this old school one iron which is just an absolute butter knife. Looks great, I'm gonna hit it just purely out of entertainment value. And my own three iron, which is where I'm gonna start. I'll be going off a tee peg and maybe off the deck, but let's start off the tee with the three iron. This is a 770, so it's got a slight speed pocket in there. This is the club I use. It's quite versatile. I will add today though, I'm gonna give you these numbers on normalized but it's tricky, it's not an easy long iron day. So one of the call outs I would make to you if you're practicing on a day like today, and you know I like to come back here, I treat these videos exactly like I'm going through my session. I've got myself lined up down these three flags for the pitching area. But one of the things I would say to you is if you are gonna do this, always be aware of the wind direction. Like long irons are tough. My fault, as I think some of you have seen, is I can get a little pulley sometimes. So when the breeze is like this, subconsciously, it's very difficult for me to get a path that's going perfectly down the line because the wind is stopping that. So we might be turning these in and hitting these a bit lower on the peak height than what you normally would. So if you are gonna test a new golf club, and yeah, we're having a bit of fun here by putting in the old club, but on the same note, I wanna learn from this all the time. I don't wanna waste a practice session. So if you are out here practicing, just be aware of what's going on because you subconsciously as a player might pull that flight down. So three iron, Love to just see a bit of height, but I can't to be honest, I might turn one into it like I've just explained. TP5X golf ball. Pretty good golf shot. Coming out quite spinny. Probably a little steep on it, like I say, but 234 total from a three iron and a 215 carry. Not bad. Peak height 66, quite low. Let's get into one of the others and we'll chop and we'll change and we'll move around. So we're now going graphite shaft on a two iron. Now my three is quite short. This one is an inch longer, so we should maybe gain some yardage out of that. Again, see the shot you wanna hit. See if we can get a nice marker down with this. It's an 85 grand hybrid shaft. It's gonna feel a little different. Like to think I can get a bit more yardage out of this. That was hit good. Again, wind's taking it a bit, but it's good. Similar line, nice strong ball flight, bit quicker off the face, gained 10 yards, 244, gained a bit of carry, spin at 3,400, launch very low. Again, I think that's the day I've picked to test. But the speed pocket in the bottom, the black line in the bottom, that gives you the speed off the face. As I look down at it, it's wider, it's more confidence inducing. Remember, this is my set club. So I want my three to do a job, which I've really worked out. I do like it a lot. But if you were gonna play a Lynx golf course somewhere and you needed something and you could trust that it was gonna come out like that one every time, that's pretty useful, but it's 244. So you gotta think, what am I gonna do with my wedges? Do I need a 244 club? I'm sure you're all sat there going, hell yeah, I need a 244 club. That's, that's pretty decent, right? Normalized, like I say, only 57 on the height, because again, I squeezed it. The Stealth 4 iron, 4 iron, 85 gram regular, all the weight now down low, carbon in there to give you that saving so you can redistribute weight. It goes behind the ball looking like a beast. Watch those peak heights I've had on the other ones where they've come out. Yes, I'm driving them low, but look at those peak heights because something makes me think here, this will be a little different. held its line, more offset. Blade is set further back, gonna control it more online. Peak height up, distance 237. It was hit a little high in the blade, so the spin came down a little bit, but I'm talking fractions. It's off by a fraction, and it's given me 
good numbers for a four iron, useful numbers. Also, I'll give it a second shot because I know if I step on this and give it a bit more speed, the way this club is, it's gonna give me a lot more out of it. A little low in the blade, but now the height is there. That's more like what I was expecting to see from the first shot. Went after it a bit more, 236. Just a very friendly, very easy club to use. And I think it's something I see in a lot of good players' bags. They tend to go for it and get great results out of it just because how simple and how easy the club is. Right, the old school one iron. What do I see when I look at this? It's got a really high toe, extremely high. The angles in the club, it's a classic looking club, but that high toe makes it really look quite flat as you set up to it. It feels long. Let's compare it to my three iron. Yeah, inch and a half longer. Of course, it's got an old school victory on it. Now I know roughly what I'm gonna see. It's got the Apollo shaft in here. Is that the Apollo? True temper gold. No, it's an old sticker, S300, old sticker on there. Thought it was the Apollo for a minute. Shout out if you remember them, put it in the comments. But it's a wider sole, which helps you, albeit there is no loft on this. I think I'm gonna to struggle to get this actually in the air and flying, but I'm gonna give it my best go. Shocking wind for it, like I say. Slow from the top. That is a great hit. Great hit. I'm gonna give it the twirl. But I don't think it's carried very far. 211 and ran out there. That's what you're gonna see, 40 degrees on the peak height. Now that was an absolute rip, I will be honest. That's probably as good as I got. Only span at 3,000. Why do you bother or why are you worried about spin on a club like this? Because obviously spin, if I'm certainly my three iron, I want it to be extremely versatile. I want spin because that'll hold it up a bit. Again, the wind maybe favors it. It only launched down at 5.4, which I'd expect to see. But you can imagine being someone like, I don't know, a Sandy Lyle or one of those old school guys just on the Lynx courses in the UK and just giving this an absolute rip. No loft again, let's see if I can get some height on it. 40 degree, 40 feet on the last one. So here's me going for height, hopefully I don't lose it too far right. Can't do it, look. Probably great if you're playing these days on a Lynx course going into a 35 mile an hour wind. 40 on the peak height again, similar yardage. But I'll be honest, they were probably two of my best golf swings I've made. And that's the biggest thing I think about tech, although that's a short example. If I go stealth being the most forgiving in that four iron, and then you've got this beautiful UDI, which let's face it, is the current one iron. It's just so much more forgiving into this sim. It's just so much more inviting, so much quicker off the blade. You can hit it low, but on the same note, if you can come at low in the blade, but on the same note, if you can come out here and you can focus a bit as if you're hitting the old school clubs, which is why sometimes I like doing it, then you can really make your strikes on these that bit better. Good height. I mean, that's useful. Really useful, it's long, really useful. 240 again, close, but that carry is up and that peak height is up which is massive. Interesting test, always fun. If you like what you're seeing, like I say, please subscribe. If you want me to pull any other of the relics out, I've got some nice persimmons at home. We could hit them versus the stealths and just see how much better, how much further the stuff has come. It's a miss strike. It's a low in the blade shot. It's a peak height. It's a spin rate. These are the little things you've got to be looking for. Obviously, with the old school stuff, you're using it with a new golf ball. So you're not really going to see much other than those line drives. But for you as golfers, really think about where you want your sets to be. Think about where you play. Think about what you want. This three iron, I think I can spin so much more than the others which for me is important. Just such a better balance of the golf club. And the spin is what I like. The control on that. Winds hit it there, but you can see that's a 4,700 spin. I mean, that is, it's gone 220, yeah. 
and I'm sure I can flatten one out if I need to, but the spin rate is just to be able to move one and then perhaps move the ball back and just spin one less. That's a good hit there. Other way, draw it. 3,500, 231. So you can get massive variances. That was squeezed, that was turned on, but I can get really low spin versus really high spin, which gives me for a club that I want to use off the tee, into fairway, uh, into greens. It gives me so much versatility that that's why I, again, one dimension in the old stuff. And there's a perfect example. And that's the 770. That's not even the P7MC or the P7MB. That is with the slot in there, with a bit more offset, with that slightly lower CG. Great golf club, something I'd really consider if you're getting your fitting to mix up. I do it in my set. I do a 770 in the three and then work the four through to the wedge in the P7MC. Really consider that. And this is the sort of test you should be doing. Even though, like I say, it's great to see the old stuff but it's still a great test to do. If you like what you're seeing, subscribe, follow. I've got all the social channels there. Hook them up in the description. I'd love to hear your comments on what you guys think.